Hello everyone and welcome to Game Devs Play Games where you can watch games and practice game design and we are here with the very first installment of our Halloween series. Ooh. Welcome to October guys, it's gonna be a blast. Um, I'm we're, excited. We're opening up with actually a student made game, right? This one. I, I yeah. believe it was a student made project. Um, the the dev, dev was kind enough to send us a copy as yeah, well. Yeah, Manny Hater, thank you so much, we appreciate you sending us this game. Um, it's called Delirium. We're really excited to check it out. Yeah, neither of us have played it. It yeah. seems like a um, sort of one of those atmospheric horror games. Yeah, so we'll see how terrible I am at it. <laughs> All right, we're going to hop right into it. I think it's loading. <laughs> Probably loading. <laughs> we probably should have checked that before we... Started recording. I mean, it could be a case of, like, just not having a loading screen. Um, That's fair. Because that doesn't uh, come built into any kind of tools. Yeah. But this seems very much but like this... it's loading in the next scene. Yep, there it goes. Okay, all right, we're good. Okay, we're in, we're yeah. in. Yeah, so, in. like, I guess to start off our, our conversation on this, that's that right there is the reason why you have load ah. screens. Like, in, in, because that way... And load screens are are sort of uh, damaging. Uh, oh, interesting. Uh, I don't know why that brought us back here. So load screens, though, inherently like are they work against themselves, right? It takes more resources to load in a load screen, mm, so that, it increases mm, the time it takes to load. Um, but the reason why they're important is because it is what informs the player like that the game's still functioning. Mm. And that's why you see in load screens the little spinny dial. Right, it's, right, right. It's user feedback. Yeah, oh, that's fair. That's cool. Samar was pecking at his bowl of grapes. He was trying to summon the curse to say something, but I was grateful that he had yet to find it. I spoke up. I'm a patient who knows his ailment. It's cause and severity. There's nothing to mull over. When a single rotten grape begins to spoil the whole basket, then it's wise to out the rot away before it spoils the rest. I am the grape. Samar was taken aback by my bluntness. He lowered the grape away from his mouth, looking as if he actually as if he actually did see my face in it. He wanted to console me and say sweet, comforting things, but he saw that I was in no mood for that. I continued, knowing that I needed to quicken this rendezvous if I wanted to start up my journey soon. My only worry is that I'm leaving you with too much of my own burden. It seems rather unfair to me. Samar was quick to... to was quick to rest my doubts with pride in his eyes. Don't worry about that for a second. Your children like my own. I look after them just like you did. Samara went on about his assurances and my mind started to wander. My eyes were scanning the cafe we were sitting in. They fixed a note plastered on the wall calling for help, it read. Calling. That word sent a shiver down my spine like a cold, sharp wind whip against the flesh. Samara's voice was fading into the ether, and I felt myself falling away, far away. I was in my dream again, a deep black sea, and I was drowning. The black, bottomless pit was leaping up to grab me, falling, drowning, deeper and deeper until I went. The loud blaring of the smoke alarm brought me back to the present, and I found that Samara was still talking about the same thing. How long was I gone for? Samar continued on, unaware of my slip. They, would, they wouldn't they would miss their father. I mean, there would be... I'm happy to hear that, Samar. I cut Samar off, feeling guilty for a moment, but there was simply no time. I had to hurry. I had no doubt that Samar meant what he was saying. He was a man of words and honor since the first day he, I saved him. He pledged his life and hasn't det deterred from that oath since then. My respect for him has only grown since, as he proved to be more than a brother to me over the years. If it wasn't for that, I would not have dared to do what I was doing now. I have no doubt that you will be a loving father to them. They'll lead a normal life, and I'll find the peace in my last years, and I've given them a chance at a better life. No one deserves to see their loved one to turn into a stranger, and I want to shield them from this agony sooner than later. Besides that, they're young. Soon they'll forget my face and look at you as their true father. It was still a very hard thing to say, no matter how resolute I pretended to be. He smiled, a sad smile, at those words and looked down at the grapes, still searching for something appropriate to say to that. My concern is more about you. He finally sighed and spoke, his eyes still digging the floor. I couldn't tell him where I was going. It would undo all that I was doing... And small bubbles of doubt were already 
forming within my mind about the plan. I need to act before my mind changes. I stood up and spoke to Samar, spoke up before Samar would ask me about the address. It's getting late, and by the time I'll be out of the city, it'll be dark. I need as much light as I can to get on the road. Samar followed and stood up after me. He gave me assurances and bid me farewell. He wanted to, to say more, but kept his silence. The journey ahead of me was long and arduous, and the sun was already slipping underneath the horizon, leaving streaks of pink hues across the sky. I parted with Samar and went on my own way, my mind fixed on the secluded house I was heading towards. I was hoping with all my heart that the house would become would welcome me and mend my broken spirit with its serenity and the solitude it'd provide me. I was leaving the city behind and hoped that I was leaving my sorrows with it. Interesting. No, this was a little weird. Oh, there we go. Ah, I tried to click out. Oh, did you hit escape before? No, well, I tried hitting escape and it didn't do anything. I bet you hit escape and, and it started loading, loading back the main the menu. Main men menu. That's one thing I've always disliked about a lot of little indie games is that they make escape the uh, like close application button or return to main oh. menu button. Press but e to open. Escape is almost ubiquitously the like pause function in games mm. so when you don't expect it to close an application that can really that that could be like the the thing that makes your we experience are not foul. Read all this this is a lot to read how much but, is it uh, let's see five pages yeah we could. my question is do you think that the narrative is actually the bulk of the, it might the experience be. all right let's do it then uh night opened up its dark wings spread across the horizon, covered everything with a thick, cloak choking fog. It's been a long time since my heart was warmed by sunshine, and it feels it's just as dark outside as it is in my heart. How many nights has it been? Too many to recall. It seems like it has been a long time since I left the city. As if this has been my only home, this is where I have always lived. Shiver went down my spine, but I tried to ignore the feeling. Somehow each night seems to be bleaker than the last, and it's spreading inside the house pouring through this broken window like charcoal black snake slithering its way inside i tell myself this comforts me the darkness and the silence soothes my senses but i can't deny the feeling that some terror lurks in these dead woods watching me waiting it's just a fantasy made up by our old broken brain the bulb needs changing that's all it is i reassured myself the terence bulb needs it's casing repaired. One day it'll fall and give me a heart attack. When there is such deep silence, a whisper sounds like a shriek and a smashing bulb would make an awful lot of noise. The stillness in this place has made me jumpy, that's all. I'm acting like a child. But why are there no star stars in the sky? Where are they hiding? Did someone put them out like a thousand flickering candles? Maybe it's all in my imagination of, old, of it, my old frail mind. I guess it's time to pick up my tools again. Carving wood and molding clay soothes my mind and hones my thinking. It will take my mind off this darkness. And I can't be careless with my medicine any longer. The shaking and the paranoia, it's all due to irregularity in taking my pills. This is it. It's not the house or the woods playing tricks. It's me. My loneliness and grief turned everything around me sorrowful and sinister. Whereas the rustling of leaves in the wind sounded like a sweet song of nature before, it now sounds like old dead beings whispering underneath their breath. The darkness used to feel comforting before, but now it seems alive, engulfing everything that has warmth and life. Mm. Creepy and eerie. Weird stuff. So what's very strange about this game is I wonder how much of it is writing based. Yeah, I, that was actually what I was going to bring up too, is that it's it as a horror game... Um, I think that having a strong narrative and having a compelling story can make for a fantastic horror experience. Um, but a game like this, the way that you move around and interact with the world doesn't feel like it would be narratively driven. Like, I mean, like as a, it, it's sole core and it may not be, that might just be setting the, the tone and kind of giving us like the initial, um, it, it's setting the scene. Right, right. So should I, should I skip books or? I, I let's skip books from now on and, yeah. and see how the game holds on aside from the, the books. All right. The books, um, but I do think that it it starts off of an interesting oh, narrative. Why is there just fire out here? Is that outside or is that inside still? I think this is outside. Kind of looks outside. I this game freaked out. <laughs> That might have been a bug, actually. That 
clock is freaking me out a little bit. All right. I do like the story, though. I, I think that it's surprisingly more interesting I than I thought it would climb. be. Yeah, right. It, exactly. It makes me ask a lot of questions, and I think that's what it was trying to do. Um, <laughs> nice job walking through the fire. Well, you know, I'm alive. <laughs> uh, hmm, I can't jump. It's only there's a jump button. I wonder if the, the walls seem just short enough that we can get a bare peek over them. Right. And I wonder how intentional that is because in the trailer they show us going through that tunnel right exactly so I, I think they're giving us like a taste of what yet what's yet to come so that's kind of cool in itself we might have to read the books i don't know i mean oh does the cursor change colors mm -hmm. is that how you know that you can read things yep oh. or do some of them because you see right here, this door says uh, passcode required. Oh, so it's possible that the clues are in the books. If that's the case, I, I like that it, in terms of puzzle design, it incorporates the books. Let's take a look. Irene gave me the stunning old brazen vase. It, it used to sit here on the hearth where now only faint stain, a faint stain lies. One day it was here and the next it was gone without a trace, just like she did. But her vanishing was my own doing. I drove her to that. I am to blame for her fate and for everything else. It feels too long ago. Even the memory is starting to fade. And her name too. After a long time, I had uttered her name today. Her memory will wash away slowly, but the guilt won't. This vase was the last tether to her memory. And now that's gone too, having taken with it all of my warmth. Leaving me bare and cold and loveless. Its emotional value put aside, the vase was a thing of beauty and a marvel to behold, too. It was a rare thing that Irene had brought from, bought from a strange trader traveling from Innsmouth. The vase had a slimy, glossy texture and an ancient crew design, but when shown under the light, the material would come to life with bursting colors, as if it were absorbing the energy of, of light and slowly coming to life. It felt... As though in a few minutes under the light, the surface would crack open and something strange would and unknown would born out of this strange egg. Yet, I never kept it exposed to light for too long as it would become unbearably hot to touch and I was afraid it would break. I, I inquired Irene about the traitor's origin and... Whoops, so sorry, my bad. And his destination, but she had not asked him many questions about his whereabouts. She tried to locate him afterwards, but he vanished completely as if he never existed, and the vase itself proved to be unlike anything in the records of local library. Its origin remained unknown, and ambiguity in craftsmanship led us to a lot of interest from potential wealthy buyers. She, however, never wanted to part with it, no matter how much it would sell for. When she told me about the trader, I knew she must have misheard, or the trader was a con man who lied about his origin, because Innsmouth was a fictional place with no real world trace. Either the traitor was a madman who f fancied that he had contra contacted an ancient race born with God's blood, or he lied to sell his wares. I chose to believe the latter. However, my mind has expanded a lot of hidden realities of the world since I moved here. Could it be that the traitor was speaking the truth? If so, the misfortune of losing it... I think you turned back a page. There you go. Stings even worse. As strange as it sounds, the absence of the vase has left me feeling more alone than I felt in this house before. I'm starting to realize how far away from any human being I am. The notion sent a shiver down my spine. If something happens, no one will come to my help. I am truly and utterly alone, with nothing but death to accompany me. I can smell it. It smells cold and ancient. I started to trace the origins of the smell and found it's coming from the basement. A pungent and hideous stench of decay slowly rising from underneath the basement door. Something behind that door is dead. Something, I told myself, and heard a voice inside me saying, it's someone. But no matter what happens, I will never step into the basement. Not again. Ooh. So this is very uh, Chthonian. I That was exactly it, what I was going to say. Smith is from is from Cthulhu stuff. Oh, is it really? Mm-hmm. Oh. Okay, so it's pretty clear where it drives its inspiration from, but I think that re comes out pretty clearly. Oh yeah, the concept of an ancient, um, like an ancient horror 
that just like manifests through an artifact is is the origin of a lot of Chthonian tales. Yeah, right. Exactly. I mean, that's that's the beginning of Call of Cthulhu. Yeah. Is someone reminiscing about an artifact that they picked up from like exactly some lost island? Um, huh. That's kind of cool. There's a lot to unpack in this game. Oh, is that a trap uh, floor? Oh. <laughs> Access denied. I don't know what that's for. It might be for that trap door on the floor to your right. That was your left. Oh, wait, hold on. Wait. Yeah, see that? Oh, shoot. Yeah. That's, uh, that's pretty evil dead. That's the basement for sure. Oh, this God. Time, that was... Ooh. Oh, or is that oh, okay. what it's for? That is what it's for. Oh, God. There's going to be something that, like, Evil Dead's its way out of there. Yeah, I right. feel it. So also there's nothing to do outside yet, though. As soon as we, have to, we must have to read the books. Yeah, maybe. That's just going to be my guess so far. I'm not... Unless, like... The clock ticking could be indicative of, like, actual time passing in-game. And so I wonder if, like, things start getting worse the longer that the game time passes. The prison of life and the bondage of grief are one and the same. Before the onset of death, how can man expect to be free of grief? Galib. Hmm. Well, all oh, sure. right. What was the name at the end? Galib. How, how many letters were in that name? Uh, in that name, there were... Uh, oh, okay, one, there was two, more. Three, four, five, six. I was going to say, maybe that was, like, the passcode for something. <sighs> yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to, like, see if there's anything else I can kind of click on around here, and I don't know. Oh, man. Wait, can you step back and look at that cabinet? And move to the right of the cabinet. Oh, my God. <laughs> Is that good? Move closer to it. See that reflection? That, that to me, is the perfect way to incorporate a, an opportunity for a scare. Because it's like in horror film, you know, the classic, like, close the bathroom mirror. Right. And then you and see, then like, some out. ghoul behind the, the person. All right. This is one thing that um, uh, Slender taught me um, last year when we played Slender on the oh, show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was that there is so much potential for scaring the audience just by having something there without, like, throwing it in their face. The horror comes from realizing that it was there the whole time. And and that's that's terrifying. That is a long one. We don't have to read the whole thing. Well, I just don't know. So like this is nonsense. I was working past minute yesterday as often as I do. Drunk. I was frail, old, and burned with grief. Your heart beating in my chest. And I was just emptiness. I miss them. Dizzy. I hear my sleep driving through my eyes. It's the nun, my newest sculpt. That I spent months carefully crafting every detail while sculpting. And it's alive. Her. And alive. My study room. I confined myself into a deep breath of relief and I took back the cord and saw nothing. She stood clear as a day just a moment ago, but there was nothing. No, a weak groan left my mouth. It hardly sounded like words. I took a step forward and then uh, and then another and finally stood at the spot where I saw her and there was nothing but a darkness. A void of terror stood there and nothing else. Are my eyes playing tricks on me in this house? A trick of the mind. Jeez. Interesting. Uh, okay, uh, the red door. Wait, hold on. I should feel the next day I summoned enough courage and locked her in the room with the red door. <laughs> oh my gosh, she came back. So it's, it, there's a lot of things going on in this that are like, once you unlock this component, more scary shit's gonna happen, but to play the game, you have to unlock it. But I, I wonder if there's like, more reason to unlock it other than just like, progressing the game you know like is there a way to figure out am I, am I missing something on how to get these codes i mean i guess like that's the scary thing in itself is like you're in this house you're just trying to figure out what anything is i think that there is probably something i mean maybe go back outside at this point yeah for all we know that there's something spooky well, scary let's, out let's there let's go ahead and let's read this last one right Oh, we didn't read that one yeah, yet? Yeah, I waited my dilemma and qualified my options. I thought perhaps writing that would make the decision easy, but it didn't. On one hand, the city life would bring me close to my family again. I'll see the smile again, the laughter, all the worries. And the heart of will bring my creative fulfillment and peace and a, lot, a place to live out my sorry existence away from everyone's mockery. But I can't. The house is foul. I'm my own playing tricks on me to drive me mad. So it's all about going mad. Um, I mean, I saw red marks on my neck this morning. Could they just be mosquito bites? They look strange like fingers. I've noticed myself scared, um, scratching wild in the night. Is it my own doing? Um, so this guy's slowly going crazy. Someone's poisoning me. 
Um, it's changing me. What am I becoming? What is this place doing to me? Um, are you living your life fully, my children? Do you chase fireflies at night? And you have sun-kissed meadows and laughter? I hope you do. My own nights are brimming with terror. And my dreams are laced with fear. Super so this, Chthonian, yeah, man. Or just Chthonian. Lovecraftian in Lovecraftian, general. Lovecraftian, I think, is a good way to... I'm not, I don't want to open this door now. Because Chthonian... Chthonian generally, like, refers to some kind of um, horrifying... Oh. 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 <laughs> it did not read as a door. I think the lighting on it was just too dark. I don't like this. Is that like a hole in there? There's another book. Why are there books everywhere? Who puts books everywhere? You're crazy, Timmy had said. Others soon started joining him. <laughs> Laughter erupted from every mouth. Um, I laugh at that now. I don't feel sorry for myself anymore. I have changed. I can imagine the mockery if they were to see me chewing on this rat's meat. Okay. So then Irene's face appears in front of me. Are you laughing too like Timmy and all the rest? Do you find me repulsive too? Just cry, old man. This is what you do best. Cry and die. That's what you can do much. It's all over. I might say Irene again. Jesus. Oh my gosh. All right. Yeah. They're just death and destruction and chaos. Okay. The Representing these as books is a little silly too because it's like... Why would he write one blurb in in one oh, book boy. for every single blurb? You know, like, why? You'd get one book yeah, and write now, all the blurbs in there. But now he's getting me. I'm not <laughs> excited about this. I do not like walking into here. And my walking is slowed down, and there it is. I, I do hope that this game doesn't rely on jump scares. Because while I think jump scares can be done right... Um, oh, again, there's nothing for me to... Well, is there something underneath that? It looks like there's a hole. Oh, that's just water. Uh, can you jump? Uh, I've tried the space bar. That would be the one. Uh, yeah, maybe it is just a matter of, like, finding the books and then... Well, and then maybe just find more things to open, I guess. I just... It's, it's hard to tell with some of this lighting. Yeah, they do keep things pretty dark, which isn't... I think it's setting at least the the outside pretty oh, well. Oh yeah, no, it's definitely setting the outside really well. I just sh 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 wish I wish I knew it to like, you know. Yeah, I mean, like the maybe past there's something in the is. car. But yeah, I guess the reason why I hope that they don't rely on jump scares in this is because it being a narrative focused horror, um I think that jump scares would be a disservice to it, you know. Yeah, that's fair. I just wish I could see like the thing that makes it scary is not things jumping out at you, but rather the oh, potential of what of the, things could and that's be. That's also Lovecraftian style, right? Is to build up this enormous sense of terror. Yeah, Lovecraft was very much the fear of the unknown. Um, and as soon as something tangible jumps out at you, it's not really like it still can be unknown ish, but it's oh, not it's like the fear of what's behind the door is scarier than the thing behind the door, the door itself, attacking yeah. you. Um, and so that only really makes sense at the end of the game. Right, exactly, to go through everything. I just wish I knew what was going on a little better. And I mean, I guess, like, all things considered, it as a jump scare would still be scary. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But I would it's, still it's, get terrified. It's more about the quality of the horror, and I think that's something that some horror designers don't, I don't know, don't mind yeah i think it just depends yeah mm -hmm, i just kind of as if anything gives me a clue what is that it's like I a piece of wood something like that so we're gonna do um multiple i don't know should should we do break this into multiple i, I would like to because i like to figure out what's going on okay so then, let's go ahead and cut here for now. Yeah, yeah, because we have no idea how long this game is. Yeah, we're definitely so, over time. Yeah, so we're definitely over time. So let's go ahead and let's question the day of this guy. Don't hit escape. Don't escape. Uh, <laughs> I'll just not touch it. We'll just, yeah, we'll just leave we'll this just as is. Yep, so uh, question of the day. Question of the day. What it w is the most important thing to make this game, um, it, with what they've given us so far, uh, a successful horror experience? Mm, absolutely. Is knowing that they have built things out to be narrative-focused, um, I think it's it's important to talk about before we see 
the end right. game yes what would make this truly scary yeah absolutely i agree so if you guys enjoyed this episode please hit the like button i'll uh, hit subscribe if you haven't done that yet either and let us know about the question today below just comment about it we love talking with you guys talk about your own maybe favorite horror games that you guys like to play and what you're thinking about this game so far um, and we'll see you guys in the next episode bye everyone see you later